23CR1243, the state of Texas. Is it Ty Pam? Ty Pam, sir. Ty Pam? Yes, sir. You were here with Mr. Parker, your attorney and the state's attorney. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of the indictment and arraignment? What, uh, can we proceed in summary? Yes, Judge. Tell me, what's the plan here? He's pleading to two years TDC. But he's a habitual felon, right? He's a habitual felon the way this is invited, and he commits a new offense and failing to comply with sex offender, which is what he's uh, registration. That is correct, Your Honor. The reason that we've decided yeah. to agree to two years is, which the, is fact the lowest of the. It is, Your Honor. I am honoring an offer that was made by the attorney before me. He agreed to do two years because he did comply with his registration mere days after this alleged date that we have in our indictment. On that offense, he received five years. So we've offered two years on his failure to register. I don't understand. Um, is it running? When, when did all that happen? He failed the alleged failure to register was from April 6th of 2023. I believe that the offense date or the, the beginning of his registration was in 2017. He did comply with his registration requirement on about the 13th day of April of 2023. Okay. The aggravated sexual assault of a child conviction was when? It was in 2009. Okay, so he has three prior felony convictions, right? That is correct, At least, Your Honor. Anyway. Um, okay. I guess... Everybody feels like that's right under these circumstances. I'm honoring an offer that was made before You're, I was you here. You don't have to. I know, Your Honor, but I think given the facts of this case and given that he did register five days after, I think two years is fair. What happened? Well, I got in a um, misunderstanding with my aunt, and uh, I just slept for a minute, and I didn't know they sent out the police to go check up on it. And then now why were you late in the registration? You've been required to register since when? Since 2017. So you've been registering monthly, right? I've been registering every year. So what happened? Oh, it's annually. It is annually. Yeah. Okay. Every year. This slipped your mind. Did it slip your mind or did you just, you weren't? No, because I had an argument with my aunt. And then. Well, how did that. You, you were, you were, you were a few days, you're like a couple weeks late or a week late on, re, on registering. Why'd you, why'd you miss yeah, it the it slipped my mind, sir. It did? Yes, sir. What is it that helped? <laughs> what is it that reminds you to do this every year? Because this is for life. This is important. And you get, can, you get charged with a crime if you don't report. What triggers your memory to do it timely? Yeah. In there's in there's you, you have a parole person or something you deal with? No, sir. You're not on parole? No, sir. Okay. Well, it's your responsibility nonetheless, you know, to do this timely. And it's the same date every year? I think so, yes. yes sir. What date is that? It's on my birthday, December the first, sir. And you forgot, you forgot to do that. Okay. Okay. Well, you understand when you, once you finish this term, you need to go and and make sure you're registered and you're current as soon as you get out. Well, they'll do it when you get out. Yes, sir. <clears throat>
All right, in 23 CR 1243, does the defendant waive a formal reading of this indictment and arraignment? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, sir. In summary, this indictment mm -hmm. alleges that on or about April 6, 2023, in Jefferson County, Texas, you committed the third degree felony of failing to comply with sex offender registration requirements that you were required to do annually for life. Do you understand what you're charged with, sir? Yes, sir? This is a third degree felony, which means you face a term of not more than 10 years or less than two years in prison. In addition, a fine may be assessed not to exceed $10,000. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Agreement's been reached where you would be pleading guilty. Sentenced to two years in prison. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, sir. If I follow this, you have no right of appeal in the case. Do you understand? Yes, sir. How do you plead to this charge? Guilty, guilty or not guilty? Go ahead. Guilty, sir. Are you pleading guilty voluntarily, that is, on your own free will and because you are guilty? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you here what's marked as State's Exhibit 1. Did you sign that document voluntarily? Did yes, you sir. understand it? Discuss it with your attorney? Yes, are the contents all true and correct? Yes, sir. State's Exhibit 1 is tendered into evidence yes, without objection admitted. The state you are mentally competent to enter your plea, which is freely and voluntarily made. You know, if you've been charged with the indictment's been read to you, you've read it, you are guilty of the crime charged in any lesser included offenses. You're giving up your rights to a jury trial and the right to the appearance confrontation, cross examination of witnesses. You were totally satisfied with the representation provided by your lawyer. All true, so help you God. Yes, sir. States Exhibit 1 is part of the record for all purposes. Pre sentence report is filed. Yes, sir. Nothing further to add. I'm going to find you were pleading guilty today voluntarily. You are mentally competent to do so. You understand the consequences of pleading guilty. There's sufficient evidence from States Exhibit 1 to support uh, your guilty plea to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And I now so find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this third degree felony. You were hereby sentenced. In accordance with this agreement, the confinement in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of two years. Do you understand what has happened today, sir? Yes, sir. Do you do you really understand? Yes, sir. Because anytime you commit a felony, a buffalo state jail felony, you're looking at 25 years to life imprisonment. Do you understand that? Yes. 25 to life. You've got no room for error. All right. That was Thank you. We now call 23CR1380, Kelvin R. Johnson. That's you? Yes, sir. Is he already entered, please? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. When did we do that? That was on um, March 4th, uh, 24, I don't have it. Because there's nothing marked on it. It looks like a third degree felony, but. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Marked on here. I can always do it. I say if we prior, what's the conviction? Prior felony. Because it starts out as a state jail felony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But then it's enhanced. Well, it doesn't show, doesn't show what he pleaded true to. Okay, St. John's felony. He's got to plead to one, two, three, and four. Okay. The yes, whole sir. indictment is what yes, he sir. pleaded to. Yes, sir. Okay. Just... Um, and I believe for, he's already done that. To, to re, but, uh, yes, Mr. Johnson, 
is here with his attorney, Mr. Grogan, the state's attorney. Uh, earlier, you pleaded guilty to this indictment, Mr. Johnson. You remember doing that? Yes, sir. Okay. So we're just going to go briefly over it. Paragraph one of the indictment alleges that you committed theft. Paragraph two goes on to state, though, that you uh, have two or more prior theft convictions out of county court at law. So paragraphs one and two constitute a state jail felony, even if you steal a pack of gum. Yes, sir. Because of prior convictions. Yes, so you pleaded guilty to that, those prior convictions in paragraph two uh, in 2022 and 2023 out of mm-hmm. county court at law two of Jefferson County, Texas. Are you pleading true to those allegations of prior thefts voluntarily and because those allegations are true and correct as they are alleged? Yes, sir. And are you pleading guilty to paragraph one stating that uh, on or about April 29th, 2023 in Jefferson County, Texas, you committed theft? Yes, sir. So thus, paragraphs paragraphs one and two constitute a state jail felony. But paragraphs three and four alleged in 2004, you were convicted twice of delivery of a controlled substance in this criminal district court in two different cases or those allegations as set forth in paragraphs three and four true and correct as they are alleged and are you pleading true and correct today uh, voluntarily knowingly intelligently and because all of that is true yes and the agreement was set forth that whatever sentence shall not exceed a cap of five years in prison do you, is that your understanding of the agreement? You're going to be asking for probation here. And uh, um, but paragraphs one, two, three, and four constitute a state jail felony punished as though it were a third degree felony, thus you were looking at the term of not more than 10 years or less than two years in prison, up to $10,000 in fine, which is by agreement capped at five years in prison. So you're really looking at no less than two, no more than five years in prison, plus probation could be assessed. Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. All right. And that was what you agreed to. And uh, whatever I do, as long as I follow this agreement, you have no right of appeal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Grove. Basically, Judge, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Johnson has had some, some recent problems. A lot of these were due to the fact that he was a tranny, didn't have a place to study. I uh, would believe he is taking care of that problem. How'd you do that? How are you? I got somewhere to stay. My mom was not. She, she put him on a little east of the How long has he been in custody, please? I believe June 2023. I ain't had no case. I got no trouble or nothing. Well, oh. Certainly don't when you're in custody. You get in trouble. Yeah, but it doesn't happen often, does it? Because it compounds the problem. Yes, sir. An agreement has been reached again that whatever sentence shall not exceed a cap of five years in prison. A pre-sentence report has been prepared by the probation office of the parties had an opportunity to review it. Any corrections or changes to it? None from the state, Your Honor. Your Honor, I reviewed it uh, with Mr. Johnson. We have no changes to make to the pre-sentence report. It's made a part of the record for all purposes. What was stolen here on this occasion? It was some food items from Kroger. They were actually, uh, he was caught going outside, so they were recovered. Uh, but it was some food. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Judge, but during this, this time period, he did have a, a number of criminal trespasses. 
because he did not have a place to stay. He believes that that has been taken care of. Yes, He'll be able to live with his uh, um, with his mother. He also has uh, has three children, eight, twelve, and fourteen, I believe, that will be able to uh, to uh, support them. Uh, How can you do that? I'll get a job. I worked at Green. I was working at Green Man. He had the owner of Volkswagen. He let me work for him. Harry Smiley. And I worked for a church. We have bishops, Mr. Morris Jenkins. I cut trees. I do other stuff, too. And they'll keep my children, too. I don't want to do that again no more, you know. How many prior uh, convictions do you have? Sir, how many convictions do you have? Just one. It was in 2004, but since then I ain't getting no trouble. That would be incorrect, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For everybody knows, everybody knows that would be incorrect because I'm looking at your pre-sentence report here, which shows. I believe he's got a 2000. Uh, two arrests Six. in 2003 for I see. felony. I see three felony convictions, uh, eight years in prison for burglary of a habitation. You were put, placed on probation. That was revoked. Then you were sentenced to eight years in prison. And also on the day that you were revoked on your probation and sentenced, you were also sentenced to one year in the state jail for two counts of manufacturing and delivering the controlled substance. So I, those I are with time. I mean, right, how many times. I want so to those repeat. are three felony convictions there. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought you meant how many times I want to repeat. Then I, then I, uh, no, yeah, I, no, that's everybody knows what I asked, and I asked how many convictions you had. I bet how many. I didn't say how many times did you go to prison. Okay, well, there's a big difference in those words. So you also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen prior misdemeanor convictions of courts of record. So what's that? It's nineteen. Plus, you have one, two, three, four, eight, twelve, seventeen, twenty-four, forty-four class C misdemeanors of gambling, open alcohol container, traffic related offenses, failures to appear, public intoxications, contempts of court, protection order violations. And failure to identify. So, uh, when I ask you if you have any prior convictions, uh, I believe your answer was one. You uh, actually have sixty-three. You your addition was just a little off. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what's good about having these pre-sentence reports, I guess. All right. Uh, now we know what we're looking at here. Go ahead, David. Uh, basically, Judge, uh, Mr. Johnson can't deny his criminal history. Again, I would point out that in from 2021 to, well, really till 2023, uh, his... Uh, Besides this one, the the, the one uh, uh, theft that we're talking about here, he's he's had some uh, criminal trespass and some other minor charges. Minor being that they were uh, gambling and things of that nature. Uh, basically, though, uh, Mr. Johnson believes that he has been able to will be able to clean up his. Uh, his criminal history. How, 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 can he's you, how can you clean up the criminal history? Well, yeah. not clean up the criminal history, not repeat. Oh, oh, oh. Not repeat. Okay. I, that's I, that's that 63 was convictions. That's a lot of cleaning up. Yes, that would sir. be impossible anyway, of yes, course. Sir. I, I misspoke. He's, uh, but he's I, taken a change of his behavior. Yes, sir. So he says. Yes, okay. sir. And uh, he would would be able to uh, hey. uh, follow well, along with the, whatever would, the orders the court gives him to do. Um, and 
he realizes this is the last time there hasn't been any, there are not going to be any other. Any other one? Any other, any other uh, arrests uh, if, if the court gives him one last chance. He also would like to address the court at the appropriate okay, time. Okay, go ahead. First of all, I apologize for what I did, though. And if I could take time back instead of going to take this stuff out of the store, I would take an application to get a job to buy this stuff, you know? And I, I don't, I live and learn. I don't go backwards. And if I get probation, my kids are helping me too, because they help for me to take care of, and put of them, and I'm not taking care of them being here. No. You know? And, I, and I'm better than that. I really am. We can't take care of them when you've been convicted no, 63 sir. times. No, You're sir. too busy in prison. Yes, and, sir. Well, but your oldest child is how old? 13. Well, you've had that child while you've been you've been committing crimes while you've had that yep. child. I, uh, don't blend, so don't, no, I'm don't hide understand. behind your children now. The, the, the day you find out you're going to have a child. Yes, sir. You you should commit yourself to being a role model. Yes, sir. But you you haven't been a role model. No, sir. No. So I want to hear about the children because yes, that's not fair to them. Yes, sir. Because you, you, your child, you, you're trying to hide behind your child, now, and that's not right. You, you're standing up on your own. You, your child has been around for 13 years, and here you are again. Yeah, but I, it's not helping. That child's existence isn't helping you be a better person like children are supposed to be. Yes, sir. They need a father yes, who's not acting as a role model. Yes, sir. You and foremost, you are a role model. They're gonna children are gonna pretty much emulate their parents. How are you doing on that? I'm doing good. Like, you got 63 convictions. I, besides this, I take care of my kids. I teach no, 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 you got it. Besides this, yes, sir. I'm sorry. You, you can feed them and clothe them, but when you're committing crimes, yes, what are sir. they learning from you? Yes. Okay. It's this simple. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, what are you asking for, Mr. Uh, Your Honor, uh, somewhere close to the top end of the five years. Uh, Anything else from anybody? I think I understand where we are. Here, Here's what I'm going to find, and if nothing further, uh, I'm going to find you pleaded guilty voluntarily to paragraphs one. True to paragraph two, constituting a state jail felony. True to paragraphs three and four, prior uh, state jail felonies convictions, which enhance this to a uh, third degree felony punishment, state jail felony. So you you put yourself in a position when you go and steal a pack of gum and get caught, you're looking at up to 10 years in prison because of your colorful criminal past. You have pleaded guilty and true voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently. There's sufficient evidence supporting your plea from States Exhibit 1 admitted at your plea hearing to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of this state jail felony punished as a third degree felony. I so find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I am following this agreement and you are found guilty of the state jail felony punished as under third degree felony punishment for prior convictions. You were hereby sentenced to confinement in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of two years. You will be given credit 297 days. You can do the math. You'll see. Uh, you'll probably be released pretty quickly here. But the problem is, is that you're going to be released and you have a prolific criminal record. You need to turn that around. Yes, sir. But you've had children for 13 years. They have a, that that hasn't prompted you to do the right. I hope your word, it, you're committed to your word because these are all choices that you have made in spite of the fact you have children at home, knowing that pack of gum puts you in prison up to 10 years. Those are your choices. And you're not just hurting yourself, are you? You've got children who rely on you. You're hurting them. How does that make you feel? Hey. I would feel terrible, but it's not preventing you from continuing to make bad choices. The problem is you know what the right choices are. Make them. That is all. Thank you. <laughs> Two years. He gets corrected. Thank <laughs> you.
your name, sir? Jason Calpircle. You were charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle in one case of legal possession of controlled substance in another case. These are motions to revoke probation? Yes, Is that right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have it showing in some other cases, Judge. I just want to check to see if we need to resolve this as well. Let me see a present. Oh, there is. We're good, Judge. The other cases, he received a year state jail on those matters. Uh, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, I was double checking. There's multiple. He appeared with your honor, I think, on six cases, if I am got the numbers right. We disposed of uh, several state jails with a year state jail, mm -hmm. and you placed them on probation for uh, 10 years on the third degree as one of, the, one of the other years. So we've got an agreement to dispose of them. Accordingly, your um, Tell me about the probation uh, um, on sir. the state peace Yes, sir. Um, which is his, which is his big problem that he completely and totally yes, got sir. him into this, yes, and sir. then he has quite naturally completely and totally failed on. Yes, sir. When I first got hired in October twenty twenty two. I met Mr. Fairclough. He was assessed with discharge from the Zan Center. Um, he came to report to the office, positive for meth. That was the only time he ever reported. After that, he absconded and disappeared. A few months later, they found him. He was offered an opportunity to go to safety relapse. Where he went to safety relapse, he went to the Cheyenne Center. While at the Cheyenne Center, he uh, within the two-month process, he turned up positive for meth. <clears throat> we were doing the ASR to get him approved for additional 30 days when he came up um violation of contraband. The contraband involved was a cell phone with charging, tattoo gun, several pills, nine batteries, broken metal spoon, thread, and black electrical tape. Before we can get the ASR authorized, Mr. Farkoff absconded again. Um, so after he absconded again, you know, he never called us, never contacted us. And the next time I saw him after his arrest, I saw him in jail. And as I explained to him, we was in the prosecuting apps, the ASR approved for another 30 days. You didn't give us a chance. You took off running again. So that's twice that Mr. Fairclough absconded from the program. Twice during the program, he turned up positive for drugs. Anybody else want to add anything to that? I think that um, his behavior is consistent with being addicted on drugs and meth, as we all know, is is a that's a dragon I mean, it's people get on that meth, and it's hard to pick it. Yeah, I wonder who forced him to do that. Who put who put it under his head and made him I become think, addicted to it? Or was it a series of bad choices? Of course it was. I mean, I don't feel sorry for him. You made a choice just like we all make choices. But we all know better. You do too. You just elected to take the dark side. You decided to dance with the devil. That's your choice. I'm not taking this deal. No, it's just bad. It, it just isn't bad precedent in... He does what he does, what he did. Um, that would be uh, good. Sir, did they say something? I'm not finished. Yeah. Uh, that would set a bad precedent for others who consistently failed after we. Uh, there's a ton of money spent in the programs that you wasted. There was a ton of time and effort that you wasted. But you didn't do it once. You did it twice. You did it three times. Uh, you. Uh, are consistent in misbehavior, and you know it was wrong. 
So I thought most people do all right in the program, but what we do up here and this is to the, the people who who like you did, which was thumb your nose at all the attempts to try to help you. The ironic thing is it seems like others care more about your well-being and your life than you do. <clears throat> you you've clicked care a long time ago. You certainly don't care about others and doing the damage you did. And we had a chance to help you get sober on this. But yet, uh, you have uh, more than one once uh, fled from the help because that's your choice. You chose to dance with the devil and now you pay for it. There's a felony here, up to 10 years in prison in one case and up to two years in the state jail in, in the other. I'm just going to set these for a uh, hearing on the motion to revoke probations. That's the best way to do it. I think. May I judge? Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Your All right. Uh, get this. I want to set. No, I'm rejecting the plea. We're going to get this set as soon as possible. This shouldn't. This is all administrative. Let's yes, get sir. this on a fast track. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. That is all. I think I just got one. So, 